Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're gonna take a look at a new tool called a 4AI. It is a tool built researchers people doing research, writing papers, reports, and so on. This tool can handle all of it for you. You can take a bunch of papers, throw it into the tool, and it will take care of all of it. You can do citations, search, it will handle all of it. AI is built on top of it, so you can connect your documents, the papers, with the chatbots as well, so you can generate relevant and correct information, where if you're using ChatGPT, Gemini, out of the box, it will basically just hallucinate come up with different research papers, citations, random papers that doesn't exist out there. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm using the tool and also how you can use it to make yourself more efficient, do better research and write faster papers. So first of all, before we jump into the 4AI tool, I'm going to show you how I'm doing research, finding new papers and also staying up to date with the nearest AI trends and also papers. So if you go inside Hawk and Face, they have a pretty nice tab. I use this pretty much every day when I wake up in the morning. The first thing I do is to go into this daily papers to see what research, what are the best papers and new AI technologies that came out the previous day. So right now we can just see we have these highlights with the most popular papers. We can even upvote them and so on. So you have the best ones up here at the top or at least the most popular ones. Up at the right corner, we can go back and forth between the different dates. Let me just scroll a bit further back so you guys can see we have a number of different upvotes. Let's just take this one and then we can go inside of it. We can read a short abstract. Sometimes there's also like Hawk and Face Spaces, project pages that you can dive more into and so on. And also if there's any videos, you can see them directly in here. So right now to be able to pull the documents, pull the papers, we can either just view PDF file or we can go into this archive page. The 4AI tool acts like both handles direct link from archive. You can connect them directly to our 4AI or you can download the PDF files and throw them in there. So this is pretty cool if you just want to connect a bunch of papers to the 4AI tool and maybe combine it with your own research, you probably have it in PDF format, can drop it in there and have AI on top of it. So right now I'm just going to view the PDF file. It will just take a second to load and we can just scroll through it. But right now let's just download it and throw it into the 4AI tool. So I also have my own master thesis here. Let me just go into that one. So I'm using Overleaf to write that. So I'm just going to compile the report, download the PDF file. I already have a video covering my master thesis. So definitely check that one out as well. So this is a pretty cool tool as well. If you're writing research papers, different reports, master thesis, final projects and so on. So now it has compiled, we're downloading the PDF file and now we can upload it into the 4AI tool. So let me just go back to the tool. Let me zoom in a bit more so you guys can see what's going on. So now we are actually just inside the chat history, but first of all, we need to connect some different files. We can do it directly here, but let me just go inside the library tab. So this is a very basic interface. So it's really easy to work with. So we can upload URLs directly, as I mentioned before, but also DOIs, or we can just upload a PDF file. So right now, I'm just going to drag these two PDF files that I've downloaded, so my master thesis and the one from Hawk and Face. So now let's upload it. So let's go in and take a look at one of the papers and see how we can use the AI models and chat buttons on top of it and do citations, collaborate, share your files, and so on. So first of all here, I'm just going to take this transformer that we pulled from Hug and Face. We can see all the citations, some information. We can see the citation. We have the DOI. We have the archive here as well. And we can see the authors and the extracting all of that, even the abstract. So it does like OCR once you upload the document as well. So pretty much have all of it here. And that's also why you can cite them so easily if you're writing reports. I can remember this when I did my masters, like just taking care of all the citations, all the references and papers that you're using using, citing when you're writing your own research. It takes up a lot of time, a lot of resources, and it's a very boring job where a 4 AI helps you with that. We can write some notes here to ourselves, or we can open up our notebook where we can see our file. So now we're opening up the 4 AI notebook. We can write notes, highlight text, and also use the AI model to write notes on top of it. So first of all here, we can just go down. I haven't read this research pair before. I just pulled a random one from Hawk and Face. So we can do text highlight, area highlight, and also sticky notes. So let's go down here and see, okay, we can see that transformers, in particular decoder only mode, llama, which process input sequences in a casual fashion. Let's go in and drop a sticker note here, and then we can go in and use the AI tool. We just need an add symbol. Let's just use the Azure GPT 3.5. There we go. And then we can make it act like just write our notes, our sticky notes for us. So right now, let's just go in and just tell it to write a summary of the introduction. 
with enter and it should generate the response with our sticker nodes. So right now it's just pulling the information. We have our sticker node, we can move it around. So here we can see the response from the AI model and we now have it as a sticker node. We can also go in and highlight text. So these are just some basic features that you can use and also will help your own research. We can go in and add notes specifically. Again, we can use the AI. So this is pretty much just combining all research. Doesn't really matter if you're writing research papers or if you're just doing research on your own. So these are the basic functionality that we have in here. If we don't go back again, we can also see we have these shared libraries. Let's go in and take a look at what that is. We have our research assistant. We can share that with other team members. So right now it's private. We can also set it to public and we will get a sharing link. Then we can have our chat bots, our chat assistants together with our files that we're connecting together. So right now it's just set as public. We then have our link that we can share with other people. We can go in and connect some files. Right now it's just going to connect my master thesis. We can connect it and then it's just a rack based system. It's going to pull the information, retrieve that information from the actual like, document that we have connected. And then it's going to give reliable responses. If you want more detail about a specific topic, if you want suggestions, how you can improve some parts, you can also use this tool, which is a pretty cool way. So they have both a document retrieval mode, they have semantic scholar mode and also Google search mode. And this is basically just for like discovering you can read it here again, the latest advancements in academia and also augment your research with data from a ton of different peer reviewed papers out there. We also have Google search mode. So it's basically just going to pull information from the internet and supply your research with that. So right now I've connected my masters. Let's just go down and take a look at it. So do a high level overview of the paper. Let's try to see what response we get back. So right now it's analyzing the question, retrieve the information from the document. So it's going to chunk up the whole document, combine that with the large language model output. And this is really essential when you're doing research, because if you're just using ChatGPT and all the other models out there directly out of the box, it's just going to hallucinate, generate random responses. It will not base it. If you wanted to generate actual like sources from the internet, it doesn't just go in and generate some random stuff, which can't be used. So we can see here we have Pretty much, this is pretty much just the whole outline for my master thesis. We have the title and authorship, abstract, introduction, mythology, result, discussion, and future work, and also conclusion. And then we get a short summary of all of them. So it's actually like a pretty nice response. Now I can remember it because this is my own research paper. So I remember all of the different details. Again, Canon, SVM, LDA, decision trees, like all of these things here have been explored and mentioned in the mythology. We have the results. So it's act like not showing any results here, but it could be that we can get it to show something. Can you show me the most significant results? Sorry, see what it generates. It also specifies what data source it is using. If you're using document retrieval, Google search or semantic scholar, we can also just try to put it, put uh, that on. So we just have to click which one we want to use. So right now it acts like does a pretty good summary again. And I like these responses a bit more compared to just like chat GPT out of the box. Maybe there are some modifications. So it simplifies it a bit and also has better formatting. So it's actually like correct what it's outputting here. Let's now go down and use the Google search. So how can this paper be optimized in format? and also writing style. Try to see if it's able to pull that information, maybe come with some suggestions from Google. We can also choose all the other different chatbots down here or large language models. We have the GPT-4 Omni, GPT-4 3.5, and also the Claude model. So we have Sonnet and also Haiku, but you can also bring your own agent. They also have an API over here to the left if you want to connect all of it by yourself through the APIs. So let's just go through some of them. Like this is not a perfect paper at all. I'm not a good writer, but I like to do research and basically just try to stay up to date with the newest technologies and papers. Active voice usage, the paper should predominantly use the active voice instead of the passive voice to make the writing more direct and also engaging. But again, I guess that depends on if you're writing research papers or like final reports, masters and so on. Avoid wordiness, shorten the sentences and paragraphs to improve readability and clarity and so on. And then you can go in and have it make specific examples for you and also help you improve each individual sentence or like at least the sentences where it makes sense to do the improvements. Writing style, we have format optimization, pretty, pretty good results that we're getting. And these are based on the Google results, but could also probably have been 
through like semantic scholar and so on where it pulls the data from a lot of different research papers as well so another cool feature is that we can go in and use this tool to go in and find other references and research papers so this is a very time consuming task when you're doing research writing research papers basically just finding other research that you can build on top of and just finding the resources to cite them in your paper so right now we can go down and use the other tools so we have our semantic scholar Right now we can just start with an ad to take a look at what paper we want to use. So find other references and papers related to this. Let's try to see if it's able to find some documents that we can use for our own research. And this is going to save you a ton of time. So let's see if we're able to do that. So here we can see that it tries to find references and papers related to my uh, master thesis here let's try to see what it comes up with so here we have something with da data harvesting versus data farming so i'm not sure if that's too important we have here electron beams traversing spherical nanoparticles distributed learning optimization of cox models so some of them are like machine learning based it is not 100 percent specifically for my research but it could be used for finding specific tools, you can probably make it a bit more specific. So let's just try to search if it can find some relevant research papers within the field. So find papers related to human brain interface with AI. Let's try to see what response we get, analyzing the question. Now it's going to pull the information from the semantic scholar, increasing human performance by sharing cognitive load using brain-to-brain -brain interface. Here we have a Nero AI interface. So these are significantly more relevant to my paper and also the research that I was doing. And this is how easy it is to use. Like you don't have to pull all the information. Sometimes when you're doing research, it is very specific area and it's a very time consuming task to go in and look for the research papers. So this is just one of the features. If we go back to our library again into our files, if we right click on it, we can then generate a citation, keep track of all the citations that we have, build up our whole reference list and our citation list for our research papers. So here we can see the citation style depending on what you like to use in your paper and also the location of the citation and the preview for the citation down here at the bottom. Down here at the bottom, we can either add it to the bibliography if we're like basically just creating a whole list or we can generate a citation depending on the format here. Then we can copy it to the clipboard, use it in your own research papers when you're writing that. So that's pretty much it. All the features here, we are covered it. Definitely go in and check it out. They also have a whole user guide where you can go through all of it. The reference manager, we covered that. The AI research assistant, the four AI notebook. They also have an API if you prefer to do it through code. And then you can just pull all the information, use the different chatbots and use your own documents together with it. So this is definitely a pretty cool tool. Definitely go in and check it out. It can save you a significant amount of time. Doesn't really matter if you're writing research papers, final reports, reading research papers, just doing research in general. So definitely check out these AI tools that can help you understand better and also learn faster. So thanks a lot for checking this video here out. I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy researching. So we also have an AI career program if you want to learn how to land AI jobs and get AI freelance work. I teach you everything in there. We have programs, all my technical courses, weekly live calls, personal help. And I'll love to have you guys in there help you out in any possible way. You can check out the program down in the description and the community. And then I'll just see you guys in there.